So Elizabeth united the nation through her motherhood of it. Um, the various uh, factions, the various levels of bloodshed which had followed the Reformation in 1534 um, were stemmed for a while under Elizabeth because of course after Henry VIII had set up the Church of England and made the monarch the supreme head of the church in England um, there were a series of divisions across the land you know um, following Henry's death his son Edward um, continued the Protestant tradition uh, following which Mary, um, the daughter of Catherine of Aragon, um, Henry's first wife, became queen after Edward died uh, rather prematurely at a very young age. Um, Mary reverted the country to Catholicism um, and carried out very virulent um, punishments of Protestants, just like the Protestants of early, earlier punished Catholics who were clinging to the old religion. Elizabeth followed Mary, her, her half-sister, and she turned the country back to Protestantism, once again clamping down on Catholics, but showing a certain clemency in a way that Mary didn't. Um, so the country had been in a state of disarray and uncertainty for such a long time um, that Elizabeth sought to placate all factions, but through manifesting her own power through I I a means of which um, was this again this motherhood this patron of the nation as we can see in her speech to the troops at Tilbury um, when the Spanish Armada invaded in 1588 I know I have the body but of a weak and feeble woman but I have the heart and stomach of a king and of a king of England too I think foul scorn that Palmer or Spain or any prince of Europe should dare to invert the borders of my realm to which, rather than any dishonour shall grow by me, I myself will take up arms, and myself will be your general judge and rewarder of every one of your virtues in the field. Elizabeth was very well educated. She knew the humanist power of rhetoric, and she used it to massive effect. As it turned out, England, which was not under any um, guesswork, um, supposed to be the victor in this situation, routed the armada. Um, absolutely, although the weather did play a, a crucial role in, in destroying the fleet. Um, and this enhanced Elizabeth's reputation and the cult of the Virgin Queen, as you can see in Spencer's epic romance, The Fairy Queen. O goddess heavenly bright, mirror of grace and majesty divine, great lady of the greatest isle, whose light like Phoebus' lamp throughout the world doth shine, shed thy fur beams into my feeble eye, and raise my thoughts, too humble and too vile to think of that true glorious type of thine, the argument of mine afflicted style, the which to hear vouchsafe, O dearest dread awhile. This is whereby Elizabeth becomes Gloriana, the fairy queen, the muse of poets the love of all courtiers, even though she could never be the actual lover of them. She becomes the lover and the mother of the nation and guides England into its golden age. So, the Renaissance is comprised of a series of developments, as we can see, in philosophy, in the concepts of the dignity of the human being, in politics with the Reformation and counter-reformations and the bloodshed attend upon that and the Spanish Armada. Um, it was one of the busiest times in and most exciting times in all of English history, one of the most bloodthirsty times as well. Um, but it was also the golden age for literature. It was the age of Shakespeare, of Marlowe, of Johnson, of Sidney, of Spencer, of Wyatt. And it determined the progress of history right through to the present day and our understanding of history overall dating back to the classical period. And that, I hope, is something we're going to witness um, with increasing illustration over the course of the next 11 weeks.